Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'll be sharing my complete method for coloring in Affinity Designer, covering both designer and pixel persona as a guide for you. This might be a bit long, but it'll cover every aspect of coloring in Affinity Designer. If you're a beginner, please check out the videos in my playlist, From Zero to Affinity Designer. Let's start in Designer Persona. Since I often work with vector lines, we'll begin with the Vector Flood Fill tool. You might notice that some areas fill in while others don't, even if they're closed. An easy fix is to select all lines. Go to the Layer menu, and click Expand Stroke. Be sure to duplicate this layer in case you want to change brush styles or edit the lines later. This way, you'll be ready to start coloring. Solid brushes work best here, as they can expand the stroke. Another way is to expand the strokes and then combine them into one piece. You can merge all shapes into a single piece or leave them as separate shapes. However, if you don't merge them, you'll end up with an excess of layers. Draw shapes to cover your character, and use the Shape Builder tool to remove any extra areas. To combine shapes of the same color into one, you can then use the Vector Flood Fill tool to add colors to different detailed areas. Or, use your character's base color to cover all areas, then apply the Divide command. After dividing, you can merge the same colors into one piece, though I find it easier to color first and combine colors later. For large files with numerous lines and pressure-sensitive strokes, I recommend coloring in Pixel Persona instead. It will be more efficient. You can use the pencil to draw color areas gradually, then combine areas of the same color into a single piece afterward. In this video, I'm using Affinity Designer Beta 2.6, which includes new features for the pencil tool, like auto close, smoothness, and a new style. Expanding the stroke is a simple way to identify gaps. Note that your lines need to connect with other lines to work smoothly, especially if you're drawing in Pixel Persona. For the Vector Flood Fill tool, there are a few limitations. Nodes need to snap to close the area for coloring, or you can click directly on a line to fill it. I recommend expanding the stroke before using the Vector Flood Fill tool, but ensure all lines touch to create a closed shape. This is a basic coloring rule.
When using the brush tool and expanding strokes, Affinity Designer will keep creating new layers for each stroke, which can become confusing when selecting strokes to expand. To simplify, if all strokes are the same color, go to the Select menu and use Select Same Stroke Color before expanding. Once we're done with Designer Persona, we'll move to Pixel Persona, which functions similarly to other drawing programs. First, create a reference layer, then add a new pixel layer on top of the ink layer. Set the Flood Fill tool source to current layer and below and adjust the tolerance as needed. For reference layers, placing the color layer on top is essential, so layer order matters. Adjusting the tolerance level allows you to cover a broader area, just click and drag to increase or decrease it. You can also work in raster mode by rasterizing the ink layer to pixels. Rasterizing lets you convert elements to raster format for a more familiar workflow. You can also use the flood selection tool to select areas for coloring. With the brush tool, you can enable Protect Alpha at the top, which works like a clipping mask. The freehand selection tool in Affinity Designer is similar to the lasso tool in Photoshop. You might also want to use a clipping mask by creating a new pixel layer or dragging it into a layer to make it a clipping mask and paint freely within it. Since clipping masks are used across many programs, you're likely already familiar with them. In my opinion, clipping masks are easier to edit than using Protect Alpha. Alright, that's it for this video. Once you're finished, add shadows and highlights as you like, and export your work to complete the project. I hope it helps you out. I've shared a lot of different techniques, some that I may not have mentioned before. And I hope to see you in future videos. Thanks for watching, 